Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining my session about open source and open source is open choice, right? So in this talk, I will give you a set of tools to help ease your decision about open source adoption, when you should do it, and practical tools that you can use to choose the right open source project for you. But first of all, hi, my name is Hila Fish. I'm a senior DevOps engineer and the work for Wix. I have 15 years of experience in the tech industry. I am a part of the AWS Community Builders program, which allows me to connect with like-minded people and get exposed to awesome AWS services. I help organize conferences in Israel, where I live, DevOps Days Tel Aviv. I'm a co-organizer there, and it's the largest DevOps Days in the entire universe. And StatsCraft a Monitoring Conference. I'm a mentor in courses and communities, including uh, being a co-manager for an open source community in Facebook. And I'm a DevOps culture fan. I think this is what helps companies achieve great things. And on my spare time, I'm a lead singer in a cover band, as you can see in this picture, which is a lot of fun. Okay, so open source uh, is publicly available and can be modified at will, right? And of course, you don't just push to a main, you open a PR, but that's exactly it. A lot of tools that we have in our day-to-day -day that we use are open source. Firefox, GitHub, uh, Java, React, okay, Linux. So a lot of tools that we use are open source and it is awesome to know. So in the late 90s, a proprietary software was considered to be the standard and the notion of making source code public was considered bad strategy uh, for tech companies. And uh, coming forward uh, to 2020 and up until now, the concept of open source became uh, mainstream and we can see a lot of uh, more and more adoption of open source uh, come to light. So let's understand what's so good about open source. So open source helps build uh, a rich developer community. It is a society that is based on knowledge, of course, but also heavily relies on the core values of communication and collaboration to succeed. Manish Sharma, who is the general manager of uh, GitHub India, said that open source is an enabler of innovation and companies, businesses that uh, turn to open source, it helps them speed up a uh, business transformation. Uh, because if a company has open sourced uh, its cloud or cloud cloud native projects, then it gains visibility into what the future of cloud and cloud native will be. Then uh, it ensures that it is part of the always advancing uh, tech landscape. Open source also boosts our code quality and security uh, because as uh, Linus Torvald said, uh, just, you know, uh, a person, right? Only, only the creator of Linux and, and Git. He uh, said that given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. So if we review our code and with it, uh, and since the code is publicly available, anyone can spot uh, and correct errors or omissions. And of course, uh, if we don't only spot them, but also uh, detect them, then uh, detect and fix them, then uh, the code will be much more uh, in high quality and secured. Also, uh, the uh, open source boosts uh, adaptivity because what does it mean to be adaptive? Uh, it means more users. If we have more users, then we have more use cases and then the code will be more robust. Uh, it is adaptive to various use cases because it allows surfacing bugs and uh, edge cases much more rapidly than traditional um, QA processes. And it also encourages more modularity, avoiding the one size fits all kind of assumption resulting in, in greater flexibility and lower customization costs in the long run. Also, open source boosts uh, agility because usually uh, open source follows modern uh, software development processes, which leads to rapid development cycles, which leads to more frequent uh, releases without sacrificing quality. And also we have less, less uh, bureaucracy, right? Because uh, opening a PR versus opening a commercial support ticket two very different uh, things. And there are no regularly scheduled release process. We just release a version to our uh, repo and everyone can use it whenever they want. So let's understand what is the DevOps perspective towards uh, open source because usually um, open source is something that is more um, dealt with from the developer side and not the DevOps. And I wanna show you how we DevOps uh, treat and perceive open source. So in order to understand that, we need to understand, first of all, the uh, developer's perspective. They think about functionality. So will the library that I just found 
will get integrated in my code properly and what efforts are needed to do so maybe i need to do refactoring and stuff like that as opposed to that devops we care about the environment and our um, considerations are, are about the environment so we need to think about how will the project that we found will get integrated to our environment and other peripheral um, considerations like security and uh, regular maintenance and stuff like that another thing in terms of DevOps and open source is collaboration. And as you can see here, I uh, really think this sentence uh, says it all. When it comes to challenges, collaboration leads to better conclusions and solutions because let's face it, collaboration is the common ground between uh, DevOps and open source. And when communities form around shared uh, challenges, the diversity of ideas that naturally emerges surfaces better solutions. And we all want better solutions because we care about the environment. We want to make sure the environment is stable and healthy and uh, having the best solution possible will probably guarantee that. We also uh, treat open source as tools and we ask ourselves, do we want to introduce this tool, this project to our system because it will help us deliver this code uh, this way or automate this or introduce this capability. So uh, we can really be flexible with, uh, with what uh, we introduce to our systems because in integration is no uh, strange concept to us, right? I was a system engineer. I dealt with a lot of um, integrations back then. So integration is a very common thing. So we can just take this tool, add it to our tool chain, and that's basically it. But of course, not everything is all uh, bright and good. Uh, there are a lot of things to consider. We have our focus, environment stability, but we are in a constant state of trade-offs and maintaining balance because Let's say we want to upgrade because there are new features, but we don't want to rock the boat too much. There is a lot of variety of tools out there and we need to understand what tool is the right one for us and what complexity, uh, complexity it brings with it. Uh, let's take, for example, uh, Jenkins. Show me one person that is able to upgrade Jenkins without having any fear that any of the plugins will break and the jobs will stop working and stuff like that. So. All of these interdependencies are uh, something also to consider when we want to upgrade or we want to do some sort of uh, maintenance because we want to make sure the uh, environment will be stable and we don't cause downtime. And um, in the middle of everything, we have research because whenever we want to do something new, we, we, we need to read about it. We need to make sure we know exactly what we introduce uh, to our environment. Also, uh, this is uh, true for DevOps in general, but also for uh, open source. And I will explain. <laughs> we need to keep tabs and be informed of what's going on, uh, because uh, if we'll take examples of uh, of, of uh, open source, so maybe version 1.0 is not that great uh, for our use case. Maybe it has a very big bug that we can't really afford introducing to the environment. So maybe if we keep keep tabs and be informed with what's going on with this project, maybe we'll find out that version 1.7 is right uh, fit and we can uh, use that uh, to our advantage. So this is one example. Another example is uh, CentOS, the, the operating system CentOS reached end of life and the end of 2021. If I didn't know about that, uh, and just like, uh, end of life means no more security patches are being released uh, to support and to make sure the operating system is healthy and secure and uh, not uh, and people couldn't exploit it so if i didn't know the uh, centos reached end of life at the end of 2021 it means that all my systems that have uh, CentOS is uh, exposed to risks because there are no more security patches that being uh, released so that's exactly it we need to be uh, uh, to keep tabs of what's going on and I really like this picture in this uh, context because if you keep, if you see, it says keep moving people without anyone there. Uh, it means that you don't need to wait for your team leader to breathe down your neck and say, hey, please check this, please check that. You need to be, to be proactive and uh, keeping tabs all the time uh, on your own terms, on, on your own proactivity. And I believe this will help you be even a better engineer uh, in general. So let's understand when should we consider using open source because sometimes it's not the, the best uh, idea it depends on on some scenarios. So let's let's cover those uh, scenarios. So first of all, when you have an uncommon uh, use case, um, 
that really that can't be covered in other uh, ways and i will explain through uh, a story so we had i worked for a company that we had um, a workloads uh, microservices running on kubernetes and it was on gke the um, google uh, kubernetes engine um, so we had a workload that didn't have to run all the time we didn't have to run it 24 7 only on certain um occasions and we, we wanted to save money right because if it doesn't have to run all the time let's not waste money because of that so at, at that time i don't know if it's uh, now uh, uh, an option for google or not but at that time uh, google only allowed us to um, downscale pods to one and not zero and we wanted zero because the application doesn't need to run all the time so we searched online and found keda keda is an awesome uh, open source tool that allows us to downscale pods to zero based on several uh, conditions that you can set and that was basically it and also keda is considered to be a production ready i will cover it in a bit so that's a, an awesome thing to know you have uncommon use case we found a solution for that and that's uh, basically it another reason to consider open source is when you have limited budget because when your budget is limited and you can't really afford a purchasing an enterprise license a open office software then you can use its free version or an open source alternative it will also lower the total cost of ownership because adapting open source software generally has lower cost because the software itself often comes at no cost or relatively a lower cost um, and shifts the cost center from licensing to customization and implementation and also another thing that we, you need to consider here is that training and maintenance and support will be equally invested in an open source project adoption versus proprietary uh, software adoption so might as well boost open source uh, adoption if no significant reason is preventing you from doing so another reason to uh, uh, adopt open source is when you have insufficient in-house resources ability wise like this uh, family guy right here or capacity wise um, to uh, create a solution of your own or even to enhance a, a, an existing solution so there's a phrase, right? Why reinvent the wheel? If there's already an open source tool that covers your use case in a uh, in enough ready state and it's it's good for you and for your use case, just um, adopt it and use it, and that's that. We can't discuss the good without discussing the bad because this is not life, right? Everything has good and bad, and I want to cover here some um, disadvantages of open source that. Are, uh, you should really consider while considering adopting uh, open source software. So, <clears throat> first of all, security by obscurity. This uh, concept doesn't apply on open source. Um, proprietary software companies can claim that their code is more, more secure than uh, open source alternatives because of that. And, um, and it will be harder for hackers to exploit loopholes since the code is not uh, available. So that's why um, this notion doesn't really apply on open source. Open source is, a prone, is prone to abuse. Um, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. And I can give you two examples uh, for that. So first of all, the colors NPM package where the maintainer added a loop inside. And then all uh, companies that just pulled latest had uh, a lot of uh, issues with that and it caused a lot of uh, problems. And another um, example is Faker.js, another library where, the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the maintainer um, or the owner uh, had a bankruptcy and he decided to that the next release that he releases is basically no release. He deleted the project. So then you can say, yeah, but if we set a specific version in requirements TXT or a packages a lock a JSON, then that's enough, right? Yeah, but not a lot of companies are doing it as a best practice and, and they, they don't follow this best practice. And then this is why I heard about uh, these uh, examples because it happens. A lot of companies still use uh, um, just latest tag and that's it. So that's uh, a reason why to still have that in mind to understand that it is prone to abuse. It doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. So we need to think about that. Uh, compliance, so in its raw form, uh, open source usually gives no warranty 
or official guarantee, making it difficult to use in a business environment where compliance is a must. Open source is not always free. Uh, you need to uh, check licenses very, very carefully, especially if your reason to adopt open source is because of a limited budget. Discontinued projects. So when you, pro um, when you purchase um, a, um, a proprietary software, it comes with a guarantee that, hey, we will uh, maintain it. Uh, and you don't have that in open source because a lot, some, some open source tools are backed up by companies, but some are uh, maintained by people like you and me, and they can decide at any time that they stop um, maintaining this project, which means that if you did adopt such a project, it means that you either need to migrate to something else, to a different solution, or you start uh, maintaining this project yourself. So it's also something to consider. Another thing is that support is not guaranteed uh, for open source uh, software. Uh, you need to assume good faith. Um, and that's the, that's the thing. But in my experience, since again, the open source is really relies on collaboration then, and, and communication as well, then I assume good faith about the support and I, I wasn't that disappointed that, until now. And also with Keda, once it was almost production, I had some issues that I only discovered in in production with the, in a certain load. And I opened an issue and they fixed it. And it was very out of uh, business hours and they still fixed it and released the version for me. So I see in good faith and I hope that you are as well. And another thing is that in a proprietor software, support is guaranteed that it is guaranteed that you will have support, but it's not guaranteed that the support will be good. And last but not least, uh, SaaS alternatives. So it's not really the opposite of an open source, but on some occasions, uh, companies will prefer the um, SaaS managed solutions because it saves them time, time to manage the software, to integrate it, and dev enablement shifts from DevOps dependency to a cloud lock scenarios that, that in the overall trade-off is worthwhile. So SaaS popularity is likely to only rise as organizations uh, shift more and more resources to the cloud. So we need to have that in mind as well. So to sum things up uh, in terms of adopting open source, there is really no right or wrong about that. It's a matter of perspective and there are multiple facts, factors to consider and you should choose what's best uh, for your needs. And speaking of your needs, how do we choose an open source project? Okay, we found, uh, we have, we Googled a certain use case. We found two, three, four options available for us. How do we choose the right one for us? So let's see the uh, uh, metrics that I'm gonna cover uh, here. We have these metrics, popularity, activity, security, readiness, documentation, ecosystem, ease of use, and roadmap. So let's uh, start and cover each one. So first of all, popularity, check out the GitHub styles, see how many are there. Uh, it's not a, a total or don't treat it like only as the, the whole grail because for companies that have, um, for open source, open source software that has a back the company, company that they have a marketing, right? They, they can uh, publicize and, and market uh, these uh, kind of tools. So just bear that in mind and treat uh, GitHub styles with, uh, with some weight, but not uh, don't treat it as the only uh, thing to consider. So GitHub styles is one thing. Also check if the project is part of CNCF or incubator, because if so, it means that the project has like a, a high standards that it follows. Google the project alone to check for online presence and also Google it versus similar products to check for uh, reviews. Uh, and this will help you understand the, the level of popularity. Activity, so check the uh, commits rate, uh, how many uh, commits were there, uh, daily, weekly, monthly uh, rate, how many issues are there, how many releases are there, is the project maintained by one developer or more? Does the project have sponsors, uh, companies that believe in the future of the project and invest money in order to see the project succeed and, and get evolved? So if the project is active, then you know that if you have have use and you need a lot of features and stuff like that, how long will, should you wait for these features to come out and for the bug fixes to come out? 
Uh, security, this is something that is less uh, relevant in my experience because usually we don't integrate libraries, but right in, in the code, we integrate projects in, in the environment. So we don't have considerations like supply chain and stuff like that because stuff are pretty much in a, like uh, uh, cubes of, of, of uh, flows, right? So it, it doesn't really, it's not really considered as a supply chain, but security is, is always uh, something good to uh, remind everyone. Uh, so check for any known vulnerabilities of the tool that you're uh, going to use. Uh, if there are supply chain considerations, then check them out as well. And there's a link here to show, uh, for tools to, uh, for checking security risk, open source dependencies that, are, that is also uh, important. Readiness. So check if the project is declared as production ready, like KEDA. KEDA is totally de uh, defined as production ready, which is good for me. As the production gatekeeper, I want to make sure the project is ready uh, to use in production. So if so, that is uh, awesome to me. Also check the current features. Are they enough to sustain usage? If so, awesome. If not, maybe we should wait and uh, keep informed, keep tabs and, and be informed of what's going on. Also, in, in the same uh, context, is my use case covered fully in the current state? And if not, am I okay with it? Because if I'm not okay with it, then maybe we need, we need to keep tabs and uh, follow and watch this uh, project to see maybe later ver versions will be more uh, ready for us uh, use case wise. Documentation. So documentation, I like to treat it as the gateway to the project, right? Because we don't know anything about this project. and the uh, documentation helps us to understand uh, what to do with this project if we need to uh, how to integrate right the, the project itself known issues and explanations about features stuff like that so if the documentation is rich and cover most aspects it will help you understand not only if the integration will be rough or not but also how to use it and if it's actually fit your use case or not maybe it's not maybe it's not something that you you should wait we should use right now and you should wait and maybe until uh, further uh, features will come out so documentation is very very important in that aspect because it really can help you understand basically everything ecosystem i think this is most like the most important um um a metric here because this is the metric that will affect your day-to-day -day. because integration of the tool itself to just implement it in your environment this is a one-time thing right even if it was hard it's not that hard it's not that uh, of a bummer but the maintenance of the day-to-day -day is what matters so and i will give you an example to explain so in one of my previous companies for the ci cd we used a run deck uh, which is a tool open source tool and uh, in other uh, companies, we use Jenkins. So Randek, when I used it, at that time, documentation wasn't uh, quite clear and the ecosystem was very, very small, AKA whenever I wanted to enhance features or en enhance flows and, and change uh, stuff in, in the tool, it was very hard for me because I couldn't find any use cases or any um, implementations online when I Googled for it. And I didn't have dedicated community channels to help me uh, deal with it. So it was very hard to maintain a uh, daily. As opposed to that, when I use Jenkins, and you can say a lot of things about Jenkins, but Jenkins was awesome because a lot of people are using it. It has a community channel uh, dedicated to it. So I could uh, consult with other people as well. So, so that was a uh, good uh, to see uh, because it helped me maintain it uh, daily. So ecosystem is very, very important. Ease of use, do a POC, see how well it gets integrated in your environment and check the issues on GitHub. Are the issues about features or about how do I do X? Because is, if the issues are about how do I do X, probably the, is, the, the project is not that easy to use. And roadmap, check if the project is defined as an open source or maybe it is planned already to go towards monetization and check features planning. If they think about uh, planning uh, their, their features, then the, you know that uh, this project is very well thought of. So to sum things up in terms of how to choose an open source project, you should ask the general questions to cover the basics and to understand if the project is in a ready enough state. And uh, you should cover the specific um, um, scenarios and use case for you to understand your pain points and how much uh, 
the, the project answers them. So for example, if you have heavy, heavy use case, you should focus on documentation and ecosystem metrics. But if, for example, you don't have capacity for maintenance, then you should put weight on the readiness and ease of use metrics. Do a POC, see how well it gets integrated in, in your environment and rely on, on your research ecosystem to the rescue and engage in GitHub, uh, raise issues and contribute to the project success and eventually your success. And I want to uh, finish with a small token for me. If you want to contribute to open source without writing a single line of code because you don't know how to uh, write code or because you don't have the time to do it, these are the ways you can do it and I will cover it uh, quite quickly. Uh, so open issues, open bug fixes that you found or feature requests because it will help the project be more robust and then help more users to use it. Modify documentation, as I showed you uh, before, uh, documentation is very, very important and it is a metric to consider. And uh, writing documentation is a skill. I have uh, also a talk about it um, uh, that I delivered in conferences as well. Uh, you, should, you, could, you can uh, Google my name and Hila Fish Technical Documentation, you will see this uh, talk. I'm, I'm a firm believer in technical documentation. I think this really helps a lot of things, not only with adoption of open source. So if you have the skill of writing uh, documentation, please leverage it. I will thank you. Everyone will thank you. And actually, a lot of uh, open source maintainers say that updating uh, documentation is the quickest way to contribute to open source uh, repository because you don't need to know all the bits and pieces and how the flow goes together, but you still give a, a lot of value because the documentation will help people uh, decide if to use this tool or not. Share your use case, write blog posts. I, for example, uh, wrote and uh, written a, a blog post about Script Server, which is an open source tool that allows to um, expose Terraform and, and Ansible playbooks and other scripts, stuff like that, in a UI with permissions. It was uh, exactly what we needed for our use case. So I've written a blog post about it and hope, hopefully that people will, will use it uh, because they will see that it's what they need as well. So if you have any use cases for with open source, share your knowledge, uh, share tools that you found with colleagues and techie friends because they can uh, maybe use it. A uh, sponsorship. So money makes the world go around, as they say. So if you can uh, com uh, convince your company to contribute to a um, libraries, for example, that they use uh, at work, or you can uh, uh, pitch in and, uh, and contribute some money, it will really, really be helpful for the maintainers. Hold an open source mindset. So if I have an open source, if I have a, a use case, sorry, that I need to uh, find a solution for, I can go and Google for proprietary software, or I can uh, deliberately search for open source uh, solutions that will help me uh, address this use case. So if I have this uh, open source mindset, maybe uh, this will even inspire other team members and other people in my area to have this mindset as well. And then other people will um, adopt open source as well. And last but not least, spread the word on open source at conferences like I'm doing just now. Uh, so yeah, that's it. I really hope that you enjoyed uh, this talk and this, uh, and I hope that this talk will give you a, a lot of value. Uh, you can reach out to me and follow me on LinkedIn if you want to and Twitter. And uh, if you, you can engage and I can uh, try and help you in any uh, issues in uh, regards to open source and DevOps and stuff like that. So thanks again and uh, hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.